This photo is exactly as it was straight out of camera except for one photo editing technique. And in this video I'm going to share with you exactly how you can take a photograph that looks like this straight from camera and turn it into this where you can create a really impactful three dimensional looking photo where the light looks beautifully crafted. And it's all done with this one technique. So this is what we started with straight out of camera, add some dodge and burn and now we've got something like this. So what is dodge and burn and why would you use it? Basically it's just a lightening of certain areas and darkening of others. So if we look at our original image, the light that was coming into this barn, it's beautiful flat lighting, very soft, very flattering to our model, however it wasn't particularly dynamic. There's no real sculpting on the face and the actual photo when you look at it actually has a, quite a flat two dimensional feel to it. But if I turn on the dodge and burn that I've done, you'll see that all of a sudden the three dimensional form pops out more. The usual approach to dodge and burn in any software, be it Luminar or Photoshop, isn't necessarily the best way. If I was to come over to the Pro section and start using the dodge and burn, it doesn't look good and I'll show you that in my demonstration. So I've got what I believe to be a much better way to approach it that will hopefully help all of you to craft better images in your post-production. Now while I'm demonstrating this on a portrait, you can use this technique on any genre of photography. It's all about understanding the light and thinking which areas do I want to brighten, which areas do I want to darken. It does take a little bit of practice to get it right, but if you watch this video and follow along, use these techniques, I'm sure before long you'll be able to start giving your photos more form, more dimensionality and take something that looks quite flat like this and just give it that little bit more pop. Alright, let's get into an edit. Okay, let's open up this photograph here and work on this. So the first thing I'll show you is what I consider to be the wrong way of using dodge and burn. So if we come into the pro section, here we see dodge and burn here, and you can either lighten or darken the photograph. And that's essentially what dodge and burn is. You're brightening or darkening certain parts of your photograph to control the light. But this isn't a great way to do it. If I get the lighten tool and just start painting over the top here, can you see the discoloration that's appearing on her neck here? The same if I get the darken tool here and start painting that. You see the discoloration on her forehead? That is not good. So don't panic, this is not how you dodge and burn. This is merely a demonstration of how nasty these colours are getting when you use this particular tool. So let's reset this and from this point forward we will avoid this dodge and burn tool forevermore. But dodge and burn is so powerful that we can't just ignore it and say we don't want it in our photo editing arsenal. We do. So what's the better way to do it? Well, we want to come over here to our local masking and we're going to add two local masks. One is going to control our brightening of the image and one is going to control the darkening. So let's set this up. Let's add a basic local adjustment and this is going to be our darkening one. So let's start to pull the exposure down just to a point where we feel like that is the darkest we want our image to go. Now, we start to muddy the blacks and we can't actually see any detail. So if you grab the contrast, you can actually reduce the contrast and make it darker, but still keep some detail in there. So I might just do that just a little bit further. And if you feel like the saturation is starting to get washed out a little bit, you can just bump saturation up just a little bit. And now with a really low opacity, something around maybe 10, what we can do is start to build this effect up where we want the darkening. So for example, we might want to accentuate around her chin here and just paint that bit there. I will be doing much more with this, but for now what I want to do is add our brightening effect. So let's add another basic mask and what brightens things up? The exposure. So let's bring the exposure up and we don't want to bleach things out. So see on her top here and this side of her face, it's getting a little bleached out. So perhaps we want to grab the highlights and just control those a little bit. And the same can be done with the contrast. If we bring that down, it's just actually going to hold a little bit more detail. So if I turn that off and on, we can see that where we paint with this mask, we're going to get this brightness. So I'm just going to make one stroke just to activate the mask, just there on her forehead. So now we're back to our original pretty much. And now we've got our two effects set up, a brightening effect and darkening effect. And all we're going to be doing is using the paintbrush tool just to paint in where we want to brighten things up and paint in where we want to darken things down. In principle it's that simple, but it does take a little bit of practice. 
I would certainly recommend doing this with a tablet, something like a Wacom tablet, but I'm going to do this with my mouse now just to show that you can achieve good results just using your mouse. So I will just crank the opacity up to 100 just quickly just to show you by painting on here we can get a brightening effect wherever I paint. The same goes for the darkening effect here. If I paint on that and let go, we can darken areas as well. We're going to reset that just by jumping into our history panel and coming back to before we applied those brush strokes. And we'll come back into our local masking area here. And now I'm going to use these local masks just to help sculpt the face, sculpt the body, and bring attention where I want it to. Working with Dodge and Burn, it's all about taking that control of your photo to the next level and having a little bit more refinement over your lighting. The ideal scenario is you get it right in camera, but I always feel that you can enhance and refine your lighting even further with this approach. So let's make a start by zooming into somewhere around 50%. And by holding the spacebar key, I'm just gonna drag down. And now I've got Sammy's face in front of me, I'll be able to explain the kind of things that I'm gonna to want to do. I want to actually brighten up the highlights here on her cheekbone, um, just to accentuate her cheeks. I might want to darken down the jawline here just to make it look like she's got a stronger jaw. We're sort of adding three dimensionality to this. I might want to brighten the highlight on her lip as well. Perhaps brighten her eyes here. Perhaps bring more interest into her hair as well. So let me drop the opacity back down to around that 10% mark and I'll just start painting. So I'm using the bracket keys just to control the size of my brush. And already I've done something wrong and this is something that I hope Skylum sort out soon with the future releases of Luminar is I can't actually name these layers here these local masks so unfortunately my burn one which I've put on the bottom because I'm burning down making this darker I started actually painting that thinking it was my highlight so let's start again <laughs> highlight so crank that up to around 10% um, don't erase let's brush this in oh this is going so well already isn't it let's get going with this so I'm brightening her forehead here at the moment and at any point you can just click the eyeball tool to see your before and your after of where you're going with things and I recommend just building these up in stages so every time I click and drag my mouse that's another sort of 10-13% that we're on at the moment, just being added on. So look at our before, look at our after. We're already starting to sculpt that cheek, bring that cheekbone out more. And I'm just looking for areas at the moment that I want to brighten. So along the bridge of her nose here, I just want to brighten that up just a little bit. Perhaps just under her eyebrow here, I just want to brighten that as well. Sometimes it's about bringing out just a little bit of contrast between the dark areas and the light areas, and that really helps. Here in her eyes, I can just paint just a little bit around her iris here, so just brightening that white part up just ever so slightly. Now you may ask, why are you doing this, Anthony? Because you have eye whitening tools that are built in with AI, and you'd be absolutely right with that, but my purpose for doing this is just to show you what dodge and burn is capable of and more importantly than that this is all about taking control of your image so not letting the ai make decisions but you actually making those decisions yourself so as i press the bracket keys there to make that just a little bit smaller i'm just going to extend that highlight on her lip just a little bit and let's just hit the eyeball to see where we're going with this and I just feel like I've brightened this part of her chin just too much. And if you find that is the case, just go over to your brush, uh, your erase tool, sorry, and just erase that effect. Let's look at our before and after. Okay, now before I go too far with the highlights, what I might like to do is just jump back, kind of dancing between the two, come into the burn section. So we're burning this down. The way I like to remember the difference between dodge and burn is you think if you burn something, it normally goes black, you know, like burning a bit of paper goes black. And make sure you're painting things in, not erasing them, uh, which I was just doing there. So, okay, we're just going to darken down her jawline here. So I really feel like one of the important things with dodge and burn is just to help give a little bit more of a sense of three-dimensionality to your image. Dodge and burn is used hugely in the fashion industry uh, pretty much any photo you see in a high-end magazine that model will have gone through a bit of dodge and burn 
let's look at a before and after. So I'm actually just sort of using dodge and burn here to actually almost reshape her nose just in terms of lighting. So just reshaping her nose. Now can you see that she's got a little darker spot here just between her eyebrows here. You can actually use dodge and burn to actually get rid of things like that, little skin imperfections. And I know Luminar has tools for doing that within the AI, but you can also use dodge and burn to do that. So look, before, after, you see how that's all just been smoothed out just with a few strokes of that lightning effect. And just to clarify, I said lightening effect, not lightning effect. So you can just hop between the brightening and the darkening, the dodge and the burn. So I consider my model in different levels, um, a zoomed in level. So we can come in ultra close and we can actually use dodge and burn to actually retouch the skin. So if you see here, Sammy's skin isn't perfect, nobody's is, but you can actually use dodge and burn to actually retouch the skin. So again, there are tools within Luminar where you can actually try and get Luminar to do this for you. But if you want to have the ultimate in control, the ultimate level in control, and this is how the pros do it, you use dodge and burn. So you can actually come in and retouch the skin yourself by just brightening up areas that are just a little bit darker on the skin. So look, if I just do this little dot here on her nose and I just retouch that by brightening that up just ever so slightly with a few strokes. If we look at our before and after and you look at her nose, just by using this technique, I've managed to get rid of that. So before and after, before and after. So this is really powerful. You can use this to remove bags from underneath people's eyes. Um, you, can, you can use it to sculpt the face as you want. So while I'm demonstrating this technique on a portrait, just consider this can be used for any genre of photography, whatever you're into. It's all about helping you to control the light within your photo. Like I say, it does take a little bit of practice because if you're not somebody who's familiar with um, painting, for example, or using a mouse, you do need a little bit of dexterity to do this with a mouse, but it's really not impossible. So that's what you can do with the skin and retouch it that way. If you see any little dark areas, you can just go over those. I'll just do a little bit of work on our eyes here and then we'll move on. So I'll just brighten the whites. You don't want to push the whites too bright because um, although they are called the whites of your eyes, they're very rarely actually pure white. So for the name of believability, you don't want to go too far with that effect. If you want to add a little bit of impact to the eyes, what you can do is actually just burn down around the edge of the iris. We can accentuate this area on our lip here. If there's darkening areas that we don't really want, we can jump into our light tool and we can lighten areas as well. And then just highlight around the lip there. Just helps to elevate her lips and again, give that sense of three dimensionality. When you're happy with the work that you've done on the face, I'd recommend you just jump back out. Maybe even let's fit to screen and let's just have a little look at our before and our after. So we've definitely helped to sculpt the face there. This is our before, this is our after. So we have kept things quite localized there, working on the skin with a lot of detail, but we can use this technique in a much broader sense as well. So as I zoom out here, I can see more of the form, more of the body, and I can start to look at areas that I want to brighten up here. So I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger using the bracket keys. And I'm just going to stroke down her arm here where this highlight is. And that's one of the things that you can do with Dodge and Burn. You can use it to accentuate the highlights that are already there. And that will help to give a sense of that three dimensionality. But you can also take it the other way. And if there's areas that you consider are too bright, then you can use the burn to darken those down. So here's that before and after. Now we've actually addressed some of that highlighting on the arms. You can bring out a little highlight on the clavicle here as well. So I might do just a couple of strokes here just to build that up. And if we feel like we've gone too far with any of this, we can always come in and just erase it afterwards. So I'll just give a little highlight on the shoulder there as well, just on the top of the chest. And let's look at our before and after. It's always a good idea just to have a little look at that and jump back into the darkening. And so just here in the fold of her arm, I'm just gonna paint that down just a little bit, just to give a little distinction between her arm and her chest there. We can darken this area under here as well, 
just because we know that there's three-dimensional form here um, but the yellow of the top was just very flatly lit from this angle and so you couldn't really see any sculpting so now if we look at our before and our after we have that sense of sculpting and you can take your editing with your dodge and burn absolutely as far as you want to take it and you can get as precise as you want to get and can you see how I'm just jumping from one thing you can see how I'm jumping from the dodge to the burn and I talked about how I work in stages in terms of how tightly I'm editing so we zoomed in and worked on the face and the skin I've then zoomed out and I've worked more on the form and the body but we can work even more broadly than that so with my burn so I'm darkening things down I can make my brush even bigger and I can actually burn around the edges of the model so I might actually increase my opacity so that I can get this done just a little bit quicker and now as I paint around the edges this is just like creating a quite controlled vignette so now if we turn that off and on we can see that we've made quite a change just with that burn effect burn off burn on and let's have a look at the whole thing before and after before and after I feel that her hair is still just a bit of a solid mass it's very black at the moment and I also feel like we've got no detail under here as well so again we can use our dodge and burn to take care of that so we are just going to paint in a bit of brightness underneath her leg where her hand is and now if we turn that off and on you can see that we've certainly brightened up that area I feel like maybe I took it a little bit too far because I'd crank the opacity up too much so let's just erase some of that now erase that there make the leg a little darker and now let's paint in over the hair just to brighten this up just a little bit so I'm going to try and highlight this strand that's coming through here and I'm being really rough and ready now you can see on the mask itself these red highlights when I start painting uh, it's not looking so good but you can take as much time to get this right as you want and if you feel like you've made a mistake you've always got your history panel here to jump back in time at its very basic level that is how you can use dodge and burn we've just set up a brightening layer and a darkening layer so let's look at our before and our after and that's how you can use it and just by applying stroke after stroke just at a low percentage you can build up those brightening and darkening effects until you've taken control of the light that's already there it was already a nicely lit portrait but we've just taken it to that next level just with that sculpting using dodge and burn if you want just another level of control what you can do is actually split your dodge and burn into creating separate layers or sorry separate local masks for each component so you could have a dodge and burn mask just to take care of the skin then you could have another couple of layers dodge and burn to take care of sculpting the overall body and the form and then you could have another one to take care of say the background or more global adjustments so just as an example to show you how that might work let's create another basic adjustment let's drop the contrast down and also the exposure so that we're still keeping the detail but we can actually darken things down quite considerably and then using our brush with quite a low opacity but a big brush using our right bracket key to make it bigger we can now just start painting this in and to come around here I find these two grey panels just to the right of her head quite distracting so they're quite bright so let's darken those down darken this down get up here into the roof paint that down as well and hopefully we can just start to guide the viewers eye to the most important parts of the photos which in this case is Sammy's face Sammy's body um, so if we we can even darken down the body overall just a little bit just a smidge so that our eye is coming more to her face as well so now if we turn that off and on you can see that we've controlled the viewers eye um, with just another level another layer of local masking so to the people who poo poo luminar ai and say it's doing everything for you i say that is absolute rubbish sure it can give you leverage and help you and that's fantastic that it does but if you want to take more control of your imagery and turn it from something like this to this we've achieved that using dodge and burn using the local masks and we haven't even touched or looked at any of the other tools that we have available to us
So if you really want your photography to stand out from the sea of mediocrity that's out there, dodge and burn is a tool that you really need to learn. You can use this technique on landscapes, portraits, anywhere where you want to take a little more control of that light, you can do so. So to finish this image off, all I might need to do now is just come into perhaps mood and just choose a nice LUT that might colorize it in a way that I like. I quite like that Los Angeles look because it's creating quite a nice complementary orange blue, yellow blue kind of look here. So let's turn that off, turn that on. Yeah, yeah, we can go with that. Let's look at our before and our after. Dodge and burn, there you go. And there you have our finished before and after. Hopefully you guys have appreciated me sharing this with you. If you have, do me a favor, just write a comment that says liked it, whatever. Um, leave me a thumbs up. And if you guys want to get yourselves a copy of Luminar AI, I have a link in the description with a discount code as well. That's a win-win because you guys get to save some money on this already very affordable piece of software. And I get a small commission and that just helps me to keep creating free content, free education for you guys, which I love doing. Love you guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.